So we go online now. You confirm me officially? Yes, we are online. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, because we have still two minutes left on my clock, but maybe the French clocks are going differently. However, uh, we can still wait one or two minutes so that everyone is joining us for today's uh, webinar organized by CEOL. Uh, it's all about the technical development and production of plant-based products, so really from field to fork, which is so important. That's what we see in the supermarket, and now we discover everything um, about the production itself behind what we see in the supermarket. Um, before we start, um, I would just like to tell you um, a little bit about the webinar itself, about how we structured it. Uh, we have four speakers here today with us. They are from all over Europe, from uh, Belgium, from France, uh, from Germany, and from Latvia. So we start with um, Moritz uh, Kieswetter. He is working at Nextera from the Solina Group. They design um, customized ingredient solutions for clients operating in the food industry, uh, also food services and so on. And they also do scaling, which is really important if you want to go and grow afterwards. And then uh, we hand it over to Philip Sieger. He's joining us uh, from Germany. He's working at Lurima. It's a part of the Crestel and Diapers group. They produce wheat-based raw materials such as um, wheat starches and wheat proteins. So you will learn all the details uh, at his part. And then we hand it over to Sylvie Brunel. She's working at Klextral. They provide clients from food and green uh, industries and so on, um, complete processing lines, so such as uh, extruders or dryers. It's really interesting to learn about this. And then uh, we are ending up with Diana. Uh, she's working at Caravella. Uh, Caravella is behind the uh, see all and the series of webinars. And uh, she's a, well, a producer of canned fish and other fish products. And she will tell us a little bit more about the plant based brand um, fish, beef, so the alternative for, for fish products. Um, so each part will take approximately 20 minutes, uh, which means we should end at around um, 3.30 CET, European time here in Paris, uh, Rome and so on. Um, if you cannot watch the webinar entirely or if you need to leave earlier or, or if you're interrupted, we know how it is when you are going online, uh, no worries, we register the webinar so you can either uh, watch it afterwards on YouTube. We will send you the link. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to use the chat function. Um, it's very easy. And we even encourage you uh, to already write us your questions if you have any questions during the webinar so that it's not coming all at the end. Uh, we will come to your um, questions after each part. So no worries, we will take care about this. If you do not have the answer or if we do not have the time to answer, you can just let us your contact data. And so we can um, come back to you later on after the webinar, discuss and, and see further opportunities or answer your questions. Um, so this is all about the structure of the webinar. Uh, me, my name is Svantje. I am uh, working for a vegan uh, trade show called Veggie World, which is taking place uh, this um, weekend in, in Paris. So I'm uh, really um, happy to moderate today this webinar uh, for you because it's really not only my, um, my profession, but also my passion. So me as a consumer, I find it super interesting to learn about the technical details and developments of when a product idea um, is launched to, to its um, delivery on the market and how it's produced the uh, exchanges with the yeah, speakers of today and what they will show you today is uh, really, really interesting and you will learn a lot of things. Um, and to tell you a bit more about the webinar itself, see all, uh, I'm really happy to introduce to you Roland, uh, which you can see on the screen. Uh, he's the marketing manager at Caravella and so the official organizer of this webinar. Um, so, hi, uh, Roland, maybe, um, yeah, you want to give us a little short introduction about uh, yourself? <laughs> yes, uh, hello once again to all our speakers. Hello to everyone who is joining us right now uh, through the online. My name is Roland, I'm marketing manager in company Caravella. And uh, today I'm, I'm really happy that uh, this time we decided uh, to organize this, our online event, a little bit <clears throat> In different uh, in different way, before we organized uh, more or less like 
webinars where we presented our company novelties, our company new projects, and new developments. Uh, and uh, today we decided to little bit change this, and we decided to create this panel discussions where we invite uh, real professionals from this uh, field. And today we will discuss, of course, um, this topic which Swansi already mentioned about about vegan product, vegan market from more or less technical point of view. And uh, I really hope and believe that uh, this panel discussion will give you, uh, to all our participants, gave you some new information, new insights and uh, new ideas about this uh, market. And I hope that after uh, this uh, panel discussion, you will learn something new and you will have more knowledge about this uh, segment. So that was very shortly from my side, probably then uh, Swansea stage is yours. Thank you once again for all our uh, participants and uh, let's discuss some vegan stuff. Thank you. Well, thank you very uh, much, Roland. That was uh, very nice to have a small background about the webinars. Um, and not to forget that uh, tomorrow, if you are interested, we will talk about um, vegan products in uh, retail. So how they're ending up in shelves and what's the visibility of nowadays, the differences between the countries. So if you would like to participate, there's still time to subscribe. It's also for free. And uh, yeah, um, now I'm handing it over to our very first speaker. It's Moritz who's joining us today from Belgium. Uh, Moritz, it's uh, great to have you here. Maybe Thanks you a can, lot. Um, show yourself Moritz. <laughs> yes indeed I'm on um, uh, I can be seen I should probably also share my screen I guess right I can see mm. you and I can hear you yes okay let me see if I share my screen that works for you people as well uh, you should be seeing it now correct yes we can see your screen okay perfect and uh, yeah, I wanted to mention this. So um, Moritz is working for Nextera. It's part of the Solina um, a group uh, dedicated to new food. So um, maybe I just let you start your presentation, um, Moritz, which is including some very interesting market uh, details also and consumer trends. So please go ahead, Moritz. Okay, thanks a lot. And thanks everybody for, for tuning in, so to speak. Um, and indeed, uh, we've been asked uh, um, uh, from, from uh, um, Caravella to give a little overview of, uh, let's say, the, the, the market context, um, the market figures, consumer figures, growth figures um, for the meat alternatives and, of course, the fish and seafood alternative market. Um, and that's what we're here for. And also to give you a little glimpse of what we're doing specifically with Nextera um, at Solina. So welcome, as the slide says, let's talk about um, some tasty products, some fish alternatives. Um, and to begin of the presentation, um, I want to reassure all of you that it's yeah, meat analogs market is a booming, structurally booming market, uh, which will be at the end of this year be worth 1.6 billion euros uh, in Europe alone. Um, and as you can see, has been growing um, exponentially over the last years, especially beginning, let's say 2017, 2018, quite uh, uh, astonishing growth. Um, on the other hand, um, it will exponentially grow further. We're on the left side of the screen now, obviously, and we're going to go to the right side. It's, it's really um, a budding little plant growing every year. Um, and at this moment, we're basically at one to two percent in value of the total meat market. While within 12 years from now, in 2035, will be somewhere between 10 and 23 percent of the total market. And it's not me saying it, it's it's, it's an ag aggregate figure, um, um, aggregate range from, from several studies um, under which from the Boston Consultancy Group and Blue Horizon. So really um, a tremendous momentum picking up and it's only the beginning yet. And within this market, meat market, of course, fish alternatives are the next big thing, so to speak. Um, there are lots of burgers in the market already. There is lots of, uh, of, of chicken-like products, but what we really see hitting the shelves more and more is fish alternatives. And there you can see globally um, the, the, the hundreds and hundreds of products being launched every year and really picking up since 2018, um, more than double-digit growth, obviously, um, from everything that's being launched uh, in fish alternatives year on year. Um, and also when looking to Europe, that's the same, that's the same case. Um, and we see a highly increasing launch activity in fish activity, uh, sorry, fish substitutes across the European market. And especially we see that within the blocks. So that's basically everything that's, that's yeah, let's say rectangular, a fish stick, a burger, a whole block of product. And we also see it in the shredded minced, as they call it with Mintel. So, so that's obviously 
uh, where, where tuna substitutes would fall. Um, and on the other hand, we see quite some white space still after um, um, earlier developments in uh, the fillet space. So everything that's fish fillet, that's still an interesting space to be watched out over the next years uh, because there will be lots of uh, lots of new product launch activity going on and also um, not included in the graph but i wanted to uh, give you the the, the, the insight anyway um, it's very much a um, branded market for the moment it's uh, just starting up so obviously it makes sense meat substitutes markets um, one to two percent of the total market um, uh, so so still niche itself but going to the mainstream uh, already arriving in the mainstream as we'll see in a second um, but of course, within 10, 12 years from now, when we are at 10 to 23 percent of the total market, um, makes sense that we'll have much more uh, opportunities for private label to play as well. So quite an opportunity to get on that early, of course. Um, and that whole growth, the growth of the market, um, is not existing in a vacuum. It's it's existing within the framework of the consumer, of course. And there is the one thing consumers wanting to consume less meat and less fish. We'll see in a second why for the fish side. And on the other hand, wanting to consume more plant based products. Um, and it's really a meta trend um, co covering everything and, and, and shaping, really reshaping the way consumers are eating. Um, and despite it being vegan products, um, mostly we're not only targeting the vegan and also not only the vegetarian uh, consumer with this, because despite being bigger and bigger over the years, those markets are still quite niche, two and four percent of the global population. So um, even in, in really developed countries, we will say, let's let's say it, it tops out at 10 percent of the population. But there is a much bigger, more interesting group, which is the flexitarian, being everybody who um, um, goes to plant-based, who um, embraces that, but still eats meat and fish, just reduced. They reduce the amount of meat and fish they eat, and globally that's 42% of the population, so really a mainstream group. And what we see below on the slide is that it's very much driven by the younger generations as well, and even in the Generation Z, so that's everybody below 25, so very young people, there is 30% eating alternatives to meat and fish every day already. So. Just imagine 10 years from now, 15 years from now, when those people grow up, uh, get jobs and, and, and of course become the consumer and of course also the parents of the new generation, then that change will be even more exponentially growing, which makes a lot of sense. Um, Another very interesting insight on this slide, we like to talk about plant-based because the consumer prefers this. Vegan and vegetarian, it's very clear what it is, but it's also exclusive. If I'm not a vegan, if I'm not a vegetarian, it might not be for me. While plant-based, it sounds very healthy and it's very inclusive. So that's what we talk about plant-based. Um, so consumer is adopting a new eating style. Um, and you see that it's increasingly a habit. Uh, it's between 50 and even 26 percent across European countries that people say um, it's it's included in a habitual, in a in a typical purchase uh, in a grocery trip. It's plant-based product, so quite a lot and, and growing. Um, and also interest in plant-based fish is growing more and more. And we see that, for example, in Germany, 60 percent of meat substitutes users, they're very interested in fish substitutes as well. And for example, in the US, and then that's always a very trendy country, of course, when it comes to, to consumer changes, uh, we see that a third of everybody who is a plant-based protein user, they've already um, tried fish substitutes, and uh, it's even 40% for the younger generation between 18 and, uh, 18 and 44, so growing there as well. Um, so we've established it's growing, the consumer is changing its eating or his eating patterns, and that's driven by a lot of motivations that we have here. And interestingly enough, it's not animal welfare that's the most important. It's the most important for vegans, but not for flexitarians. The most important ones are health and sustainability. Um, and health is, is obviously about rational health benefits being low in cholesterol, low in saturated fats, lower in salt, not carcinogenic, all of those but also emotional benefits. It makes me feel lighter. It gives me a good feeling. Um, it makes me concentrate better after lunch if I eat plant-based. Those are very important for a lot of consumers. And then the second one, of course, is sustainability. And we'll see in a second for fish substitutes, that's the number one reason, sustainability. Um, once the consumer has decided to become a flexitarian and buy those products, uh, those reasons change a little bit and it all becomes about taste and texture. If you want to rebuy something, it has to be a good product. 
So it's taste and texture that's the number one important criterion for repurchase. And that's why with Solina, we make food matter. That's why we're in the meat and fish alternative spaces as well, to really see to that the taste, texture, and the sensory criteria of the products are quite good. And there is quite a way to to be um, gone there still because only 30 percent and that's as of october 2020 only 30 percent of consumers in in europe and in uh, the us agree that um, plant-based alternatives just taste just as good as the animal counterparts so in other words seven out of ten aren't convinced yet and there is still quite an opportunity to increase that figure of course to make the products even better um then with fish it's all about and this is not fish substitutes but fish it's all about sustainability, if you look at claims. So sustainability is very important for fish um, and also environmental friendliness. So sustainable fishing and environmental um, um, fishing and packaging. And that's for real fish. But if you look at fish substitutes, that's even more important because what's more sustainable than eating sustainable fish is eating no fish at all and making it from plants, obviously. And you probably, most of you will have seen the, the Seaspiracy um, documentary on Netflix where it's really about how sustainable is fishing? Is it always very sustainable? Lots of people are doubting it. So of course, um, concerns on ethics and environment are drivers for fish substitutes, overfishing, ocean biodiversity, the climate impact, also pollution, plastic, pesticides, hormones, but of course also health and well-being concerns, even though it's more limited versus meat because fish is still seen as very healthy and is quite healthy, but still um, um, heavy metals, pathogens and viruses and microplastics are something that you as a consumer can still exclude if you eat fish substitutes. So for some people also very interesting. Um, and this really fits the meta trend of sustainability, um, which is one of the top 10 trends for 2022 by Euromonitor. It's uh, um, one of the top trends that people really see themselves as climate changers more and more. And 50, 60, 65 percent being worried about climate change um, even more. They think they can have a positive impact and they can make a difference with their own actions. So really sustainable consumption is a meta trend and is becoming more and more important in that way. Um, so that were the drivers, um, health, sustainability, and then taste once you've tried it. And the barriers is exactly the is exactly the same. If you don't like it, if you haven't tried it yet, then what would change your behavior if it would be tastier, if it would be healthier, and also if the price would be lower. So very interesting to look at this that way. Um, if you improve the taste, you don't only service the people already in the category, but of course you can also attract new people to the category. Same with health and nutrition. And that's what um, at Nextera we try to do, and we'll get to Nextera in a second, but I just included this snapshot here where we really make an overview of our products uh, towards the competition. And what we really try to do is outperform on taste and on nutrition, because that's the key towards the flexitarian target group to attracting them. Um, and then just quickly an overview of the meat, uh, sorry, fish substitutes market. Um, what we see there is that breaded and tuna rule the market for now. So it's everything that's fish sticks and burgers. So everything that's coated, breaded, uh, very uh, many products on the market. Tuna, of course, fish peas uh, looking great between the other ones as well. Um, tuna is the second biggest trend. And then there are some smaller ones. Um, Smoked salmon, I found a few, seafood, there is a few products, scampi alternatives, and fillets still very much of a white space with only a limited amount of products on the market yet. But of course, um, under development um, at the moment. Um, and that's of course where we come in with um, Solina um, being um, an end-to-end -end partner for the for the savory food industry and also for uh, with Nextera for the meat and fish alternative spaces, really working end-to-end, um, -end, working integrated with customized solutions, always working on the culinary side, on the nutrition side and the functional side all at once. So we're not only working on the protein basis, but we also include the right seasonings, the right coatings, the marinades, sauces and so on in one product, in one end application so that you can really um, service your end customer as, as uh, optimally as possible. Um, and as I said, we do it end to end. So really from our own raw material um, sourcing worldwide towards uh, the finalized product and the upscaling as Swanky mentioned um, for our customers. Um, and we do it across the globe. Um, but in the interest of time, Nextera, very interesting to talk about. We are the plant-based business unit from Solina. And if you look at the, the value chain, so from field to fork, we're only active uh, in a limited amount of them. We're not active in farming. We're not active in plant protein production, not in distribution, not in consumer. We only make plant meat 
and we do food processing because we want to be as independent as possible and really advise the customer um, on the right um, ingredients for them and the right technology for them to really come to the locally and customer relevant end application. Um, and that's the role that we have. Um, what we do is we develop um, our own um, plant meat, so to speak, so extruded. Uh, as only as one of the only ones in the world with with both uh, commercially relevant um, extrusion technologies, wet extrusion technologies in house, so we really can advise uh, not only on ingredients but also on technology as independently as possible, and and making your own tailored protein mix. So we co-create a mix, and then you as the customer or the customer they can um, produce themselves with the um, uh, tailored protein mix, um, their own substrate, so not using a standard substrate, but making their own substrate. And then, of course, using the Solina capabilities to add all of um, the functional and the sensory ingredients as well, um, the shelf life um, enhancers, seasonings, um, the coatings, binders, and so on, um, to really come to an end application. Um, and to show you, because uh, pictures are often much more easily understood than a lot of words, I brought you a short video. And uh, let me know in case you he wouldn't hear the sound, but it should work. We tested it. Enjoy. Welcome to Next Day. Today, we invite you to discover the benefits, the technologies and some inspirational concepts. Nextera has as purpose to develop new protein foods with a complete end-to-end -end expertise. To do this, our approach consists of four pillars. The first pillar is an in-depth consumer and market understanding on global as well as on local level. We advise on technology and ingredient selection, taking into account customer requests on, for example, taste preferences, nutritional claims, texture, etc. The second pillar is that we have our own Nextera Research Center, which includes a state-of-the-art pilot plant and which is equipped with the most important technologies. The third pillar is that we have a dedicated Nextera team, which consists of experts in research and development, processing technology, nutrition, and we even have culinary chefs. And last but not least, we are a full-service partner, being able to be your sole point of contact. Our team is doing R, D and A, so research, development and application. In a dedicated pilot plan, we research on a wide range of technologies and ingredients in order to create new protein foods optimized on sensorial properties such as taste and texture. For this, we are studying and applying the most relevant existing and emerging technologies for the development of tasty meat alternatives. We develop customized dry complete mixes based on textured vegetable proteins of a wide range of plant origins, combined with other functional ingredients and endless taste and color combinations. And if wanted, with shelf life enhancers and enriched with vitamins and minerals. These dry complete mixes can simply be combined with water and oil to make any possible minced meat application. Next to this classic technology, we're intensively working on alternative proteins and meat alternatives using the two most relevant fibrillation technologies, fully equipped in our dedicated Nextera pilot plan. Both technologies have proven to be very relevant when developing hybrid, vegetarian and vegan end products, since both technologies allow a wide variation in tastes, colors, nutritional values and claims, textures, declarations and allergen statuses. All the different sites from Solina have their own local future food application technologists, allowing Solina to offer fully localized and customized new protein food applications across the globe. They are Solina experts, combining the right functional ingredients with the right seasonings, sauces, marinades, coatings, etc. Creating recipes, concepts and customizations, tailor-made for each customer in their specific local and business context. OK, 
Okay, just to give you an idea of what we're up to at Nextera, and of course um, that allows us endless application possibilities using the different technologies, um, um, using all Solina insights on how to make food matter and how to make it uh, taste good. Um, uh, nutritionally good and and, uh, and uh, functionally good um, and and it goes around the clock so to speak from from possibilities uh, sky the limit um, and of course what we are here to talk today um, about is the fish and seafood analogs and those are all the um applications that we are um, uh, developing at the moment and and also um of course fish and seafood is is, is something that we we are uh, in contact with caravella about and and then doing some 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 knowledge sharing and some some collaboration on so um, very happy to be invited to talk about that um for that um and then um, that's already the end of the presentation. Hopefully you found some interesting insights um, and looking forward to any questions. Um, if you want to find out more about what we're doing at Nextera, go to LinkedIn, go to YouTube um, as well and have a look at um, our channels and connect there. Thanks a lot and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Moritz, for this um, very complete, compact uh, presentation about the markets, market numbers and about what you're doing. You uh, were mentioning that um, one of the um, issues, uh, let's call it an issue, not, not yet, but uh, that they're like seven, uh, seven out of ten are uh, not convinced that the taste or the product is as good as they would like to. Maybe um, this is certainly a challenge in, in the production of vegan, vegan products. Maybe you can mention another example or if this is uh, the, the challenge, uh, maybe one of the biggest challenges nowadays, um, well, in the development of vegan products. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot for the question. And then maybe let me start off by saying that um, we're talking about the flexitarian target group to target them. But um, and also talking about um, communicating on plant based um, products, not vegan products necessarily. Um, that doesn't mean that the product itself doesn't have to be vegan because um, certainly the end customer and uh, end consumer and also customers um, are expecting vegan. Vegan is becoming the standard because everybody can consume it because it's very inclusive. If it's plant based, truly plant based, then also vegans and also vegetarians can consume it. Um, mm -hmm. And as you correctly say, um, it's, it's, it can be quite challenging to make a good product um, yeah. in that way. Um, and that's um, especially true for the texture. Because uh, what what vegetarian ingredients, specifically egg white egg um, derivatives, are often still used for is the bite. Um, so it's really um, about um, knowing how to combine and and how to process ingredients, and that's what my colleagues in R and D are working on every day, um, and to really know how to combine, how to process, to really have a convincing bite in hot and in cold conditions. Um, and and certainly, if you go allergen free, that gets even more important. Um, next to texture, there is also taste can be challenging um, because, of course, the more plant protein you use, the more you have a chance of plant protein off tastes. Um, and then it becomes quite important to know how to um, combine the right ones so that you have the least amount of off taste. And then after that, not starting by masking everything, but but first combining the right ones so you don't have a lot to mask and then masking smartly. Um, and, and certainly don't um, just um, use overpowering flavors to, to, to hide any, any off flavors. Try to get rid of the off flavor first before applying any top notes. That's what we really advise. Um, and finally, nutritionally, it's quite okay. It's it's quite quite um, feasible to make um, vegan products that are nutritionally um, complete and valuable, mm -hmm. um, but of course when you want to combine everything, so taste, texture, nutrition, that's where it gets really challenging, and and that's why we really believe in our um, local um, customer first approach, really making tailor made applications and not starting from 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 building blocks or from from toolkits. Um, because only if you really have a look at what the market wants, what the consumer wants, and start by that, start by complete independent selection of technology and ingredients, you can really go to um, the most sustainable, um, the most um, uh, locally relevant, and the most um, um, taste, yeah, sensorially, sensorially optimized product. Yeah, so that's how we like to experience. approach that. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed, exactly. the holistic and local first spirit. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. If um, our public has any further questions for Moritz, uh, as I mentioned, you can add them in the chat. 
we will also have a Q, uh, Q and A at the end of the webinar. So thank you very much, uh, Moritz, for your yes, input. It was a pleasure. And for your Thanks great for having start me. of this webinar. Um, we are now handing it over to Philip. So he's the sales manager at Lorima um, with a very large technical expertise, by the way. And uh, yes, so he's uh, joining us from, from Germany today. Philip, maybe you uh, can say a quick hello. Hello, yes, uh, hello. I'm the responsible sales manager for the Baltic States uh, from the company Ruma, or better to say from the Crespel Datas Group. Um, yes, um, we talk a lot about a lot uh, or more say a lot about uh, plant based products. So um, the most important is the plant. Yes, we need a lot of plant raw material. This is what we have. Um, yes, uh, because it's um, I would like to say a little bit about our very old company and make a sh short overview. And uh, after this, um, yes, maybe you have some questions. Yeah, perfect. Well, let's go to the source. Let's go to the raw materials. Um, Philip, it's up to you. Let us. Uh, Many thanks. Yes. Uh, so wait a moment. So. Sure. We Did can you... see it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, this was I my question. <laughs> <laughs> it was first. Yes, thanks. Uh, at first, many thanks for the inviting of the seminar, uh, webinar. It's a pleasure, pleasure for me to say uh, to, to say a little bit about our company and um, about our products. Um, I think it's uh, very interesting products. Um, yes, um, yes, I say a little bit about about our company. So yes, this are the part of my um, presentation. A little bit about our group, a little bit about our portfolio, and a little bit some ideas of our product development uh, which we have uh, at concepts yes at first our crest uh, the crest data group and Luruma, yes i said uh, we are uh, part of the crest data group the crest and data group is about 160 years old it's a very old company it's in the fifth till uh, sixth generation of family owned. The fifth generation is on the head and the sixth generation is more, more or less uh, in, the, in the company and make some daily work. So um, it's good to have a straight away to the, to the um, future. It will be the same. We have uh, some products for non-food and also for the food and feed sector. This is mainly for important for this webinar. Yes, we have um, uh, for, uh, for 480 people uh, work there. Um, yes, and we make only, let's say, only wheat based products. Uh, the reason I will talk, talk, explain a little bit later, but we are very um, focused on the raw material wheat. This is our, our um, yes, our brand names. The first name here is Luruma. This is a local, located uh, all food business. There are every food, uh, every food products which we are sells are sells under the name Luruma. Then we have the Definol Defina. It's for correct in paper. We sell a lot for uh, gluing paper together. It's a very huge. Uh, amount and very interesting business. Then we have Crespel Tech. It's a short uh, technical application for our products. And then we have Trigea and Crespo Tech. These are our pet food and feed uh, division. And the last one is ECP. It's um, uh, ex the name is extrude, uh, extruded cereal products. I will explain it a little bit later about these products. Yes. Um, these are our production sites. The headquarter in Nibirn. They are around uh, 400. Uh, we have 350, 400, 400 people located. Then we have Swingenberg. There is our Luruma located. There are roughly 50 pe persons. Um, it's very small and very very unique. Uh, we are very flexible because uh, um, the let's say the yellow building is uh, for only for the product development so we are make a lot of in product development and so on to um, give the customer new new ideas and new products and here in the uh, the last one is helmond this is in the netherlands in the south of netherlands there we are producing our raw uh, texturized protein so I'll say a lot of, about our company. Now I would like to say a little bit about our raw material and our um, subs. Uh, yes, our raw material. 
we using only wheat, well, basically only wheat. This wheat are 100% of EU. It's very important, I guess, let's say, at the moment, to, to where, where I come from, the raw material and have the, um, the, the delivery of the raw, raw material. 75% is uh, come from Germany and the rest are um, yeah, around Germany because our factory is uh, in Germany located. So we have a small transport cost and um, we need a lot of products. So um, yes, the rest uh, of the product of the 100% are come from, um, yes, uh, the neighbors of Germany, Germany, let's say. Yes, some something of Czech and uh, Romania, but uh, yes, it's near free. The, the benefits of uh, wheat are it's, it's complete guaranteed GMO free because it's no GMO. Uh, it's um, it gives no gives no GMO um, weight, uh, wheat, so it is guaranteed GMO free. It's a re reliable, consistent supply of the raw material, so yes, it's a good product. Uh, let's say a lot of um, short. Um, about our wheat and our raw material, we are about our um, and our company. We selling our wheat direct from the farmer. We have five partner mills where we are milling the complete corn. The 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 floor come come to Imbuen by truck. There we are separated the flour in proteins and starches. The wheat starches, which we modified the wheat starches in Imburn, um, modified physically, chemically, and so on and so on. And also we have our vital, uh, vital gluten. You everybody knows the vital gluten. It's more or less uh, go to the uh, bakery industry. But um, also this vital gluten, we are um, go to the ECP. There we make our uh, texturized protein. That's uh, and this this texture protein and this our um, wheat starches modified and uh, wheat gluten. We make some some mixes for uh, vegan products. This make we uh, this make we in uh, Lurima. There are have all the knowledge of the protein of the products our own products. We make some. So we have the wheat proteins, the wheat starches, and the wheat flows. Also the texturized proteins, and of these three based products, we make functional blends for the end consumer, for the producing con consumer. So we have um, all in our hand, and give the full full knowledge to our um, customer, and we have and uh, focused on texture stability, uh, texture and stability. Uh, Moritz said also uh, text, uh, te uh, texture and structure was the most important thing to sell, uh, to buy again some vegan product. So this is the reason why we want us focused on the texture and stability. stability. And uh, the taste will be very flexible um, from, from the customer. Now a little bit about our uh, portfolio. I said we have our wheat starches, wheat protein, texturized protein, and there are the functional bands. Our wheat starches in our portfolio are some native starch, small granation starch, uh, thin boysen starch, and uh, thickening starch is more in, in, interesting in this uh, focus, and also some resistant starch to have uh, some uh, Diet fibers, uh, it's diet fibers, uh, for example, and also yes, it's uh, for for nutrition value. It's very interesting product. Our wheat, small overview about our wheat pro protein. It's very very small. We have our uh, some hydrolyzed wheat protein. It's also it's um, hydrolyzed. It's very important, uh, very good for in increase the protein content of such a, a lot of products. For example, for um, for drinks or also for bakery and convenience products or fish products, for example, to increase the uh, protein content. Um, yes, and also the normal wheat gluten, but it's it's at the moment not so important for this webinar. Now, the one interesting uh, product, our product is uh, the texturized wheat protein. This is 100% uh, plant-based. It's very important um, for 
for, for to make a good structure because it's uh, the wheat protein have a lot of disadvantages, but the most advantage of the wheat protein is the structure. It's a very unique structure because everybody, I say a little bit of wheat gluten, it has a long chain protein structure, and this long chain protein structure came also in the texturized wheat protein. So have a very unique uh, structure in, in bite and um, and taste. And all of these products, we make some uh, some um, um, complete solutions for end consumer, between our producing customers. Um, this is based um, binding systems um, and brand uh, binding systems, the texturized protein, and of this two, let's say, uh, products. You can make some plant-based alternatives. Here, for for example, for very important for the fish application. You can also sterilize this product. It's a very no problem. We have also the same structure after sterilizing and high temperature, so it's also very important for the canned, canned uh, fish, for example. Um, yes. Now uh, some you see, now you see some our uh, plant-based fish concept. You have some fish fingers, some salmon. Vegan, uh, sorry, it's all vegan for sure, uh, plant based, some fish fingers, some salmon, some white fish. Uh, in the middle is uh, some, some tuna and also some um, bacon fish. You can see, um, I would like to show you also a video which uh, where you are makes this product. Uh, it's easier to see how it works. Um, yes, to see what we uh, would like to uh, to produce. Did you see the video? And we, also we the can sound? see the video, yes. And the sound also? Not the sound for me. Not the sound for you. Wait a moment. Uh, okay. Once again, sorry. No problem. So let's start from the beginning. Now, yes, perfect. Thanks. Yes, 
that was <laughs> all <laughs> many things. Um, yes. To see uh, what we are doing. Um, yes, but uh, it's only one idea, so we are very flexible and have a, a lot of uh, unique ideas to, which are also developed with the customer and go to the line and make uh, the full um, product for the for the customer, for the end consumer or for the supermarket, let's say. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. It was a pleasure for me. The video was really, uh, really nicely made. The music uh, also. It's a very good quality. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. We were, <laughs> so we're talking a lot about weeds, uh, and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about. Um, I wrote down a, a little question for you while you were talking. Um, could you maybe explain to us the, the vegan raw material segmentation? Yes, uh, for for us the 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 wheat is very important, um, but but not for us. Um, I say let's say the wheat have a, a lot of good good advantage. advantage. Um, I have also uh, um, wait a moment a, a picture. So it's very the the, ben uh, the benefits of the wheat. You see on the, on my last slide, it's very. Um, you have a 99% raw material. It's, it's EU uh, wheat, and also um, it's uh, growing every year. So we have a stable, cell stable raw material, and um, it's very safe. And um, yes, the human eat a lot of wheat. Uh, let let's pass. Uh, yeah, how how long it eats a uh, eats a uh, human body uh, wheat? It's uh, yeah, it's a long time. And uh, the also the wheat have a lot of uh, benefits. It's quite uh, very plain in taste, so it's very really easy to to let's say cover it or give give them some fish aroma or some meat aroma because it's very plain. They have no off, off taste, and the structure is very very unique it's a uh, yeah, very special structure in the in the in the raw material yeah it's uh, for me a little bit uh, difficult the easiest way is to see our protein and uh, test it and eat it you you make you you, you would like to feel the, the different structure against some some beans or some some other uh, lupine product proteins this is the reason why we have um, wheat protein and and let's say um, the market accepted this um, let's say gluten and allergen because the, the the structure you need a good structure for the for the ready product um, if the customer would like to buy it again yeah because um, the, the 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 end product or the ready product need to be a, a good product and a taste and a very tasteful and structured product. If it's not, the uh, the customer will cough it uh, will buy it again one one time, but not the second time, for sure. This is uh, some some yeah advantage of the wheat protein. I also think that weed has several advantages. And I mean, you, you mentioned that your company is quite old and you are dealing with weed and weed has such a longer story. I mean, weed always has been uh, the, the favorite um, well, kind of um, ingredient for, for anything a human is creating since uh, history. So uh, of course, uh, nowadays it's so diverse to use weed for many other opportunities, especially in the plant-based market. Uh, so that was a very um, complete information. Uh, if you um, uh, have any uh, questions uh, to Philip, please, as I mentioned before, don't uh, hesitate to use the chat function or um, to ask um, later in the Q&A. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Um, and I'm uh, now happy to hand it over to um, Sylvie. Uh, she's our next speaker. As I mentioned, she's a friend such a, uh, like me. And uh, yeah, Sylvie, uh, you are the Hello. innovation and uh, process director at Klexchar. So you do complete um, a processing alliance. And yeah, you will tell us everything also today, maybe also in a little video. Um, it's up to you, Sylvie. Welcome. So thank, thank you. And uh, thank you for, for the uh, invitation. Okay. It's coming, I think. Yes, no problem. Take uh, <laughs> take your time. We are still good in the timing, as I mentioned. We will probably end at uh, three thirty, and uh, so we are very excited to see what you will show us today. 
Yes. And if there are any issues, I have everything in backup. So no worries. Yes, you can also yes, ask I, me. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, my computer is uh, running, but. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, where are you in France? In uh, family, we are based in family. This is, um, I would say, one hour far, uh, far from you. From so, Lyon. Okay. More, yes. 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 More or less in uh, in the middle of France. Yes. So I think that I have a little a little problem with uh, with uh, my uh, computer because it's a blank screen with and it's uh, running. Okay. Do you want me uh, to show uh, the presentation? If, yeah. if you want. Okay. Yes. Yes. I uh, add in the chat already the link uh, to the company of Sylvie. Um, I will quickly open the presentation of Sylvie to share you my screen afterward. No worries. If, however, on your side, uh, Sylvie, it's uh, working. Um, just make me a sign and um, then we can hand it over to you. Yes. Okay, for me, I have the presentation here. I will now share my screen with every one of you. So, do you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Good. Okay, yes. perfect. Um, well, I will switch into the presentation modus now. Okay. Sylvie, it's up to you. I try to click uh, with your rhythm, okay? So we work together now. <laughs> okay, no, no problem. So uh, I will uh, I will start my presentation by a quick presentation of my company, and then I will focus on uh, twin screw extrusion uh, processes and how to uh, to do uh, meat and fish analog with uh, twin screw extruders. So, okay, so a small question, maybe you can, uh, you can change. Can you see the I, screen? Who are we? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I am on the slide number two. Okay, then I go back. It's the click stroll overview, right? Yes, yes, and now you can uh, switch to the number three. Okay, perfect. Yes, it's it's uh, number two. Is this co the correct one? I'm on page four right now. No, no, not. Uh, I I see only the the number two on the on the screen of my uh, on my colleague. Okay, this is always the same. <laughs> Um, for the others, are the the pages are changing or not? Uh, not yet. It's not only yet? the okay. first one, the first pages, and also we have no uh, presentation mode, so it's uh, yes, uh, writing mode. Okay, I will try. Um, I will try something else. Maybe I need to disconnect. I am so sorry. Is it uh, uploading on your um, site? Meanwhile, yes. Sylvie? Uh, no, no, uh, no. No. On my side is uh, always uh, running. <laughs> okay. So okay. So now, now it's a slide number three. So it's okay right now. Okay. Okay. So 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 sorry, sorry. So uh, Clexar is a French company. We are based uh, one hour far from Lyon. We are uh, more than uh, 300 people and our sales is uh, over uh, 60 million euro, including 80% at export. And we have uh, two uh, research centers. One is based here in France and another one is uh, in the US. 
and uh, we have 12 uh, subsidiaries and uh, offices uh, in the world, as you can see uh, on the map, and equipment installed in more than uh, 100 countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our uh, main activity is uh, the supply of uh, turnkey production line, including uh, in the earth of the process, uh, twin screw extruder. And uh, we also supply uh, peripheral equipment like uh, dryers or cutters to, uh, to be able to, to get a complete line. And uh, another important activity is uh, services. That means a process expertise and also on-site training and uh, services like maintenance. OK. So uh, Klexhala has started its activity in 1956. And uh, we uh, supply today uh, many markets uh, around the world um, for different uh, applications. The main application is for uh, food and feed. And uh, the, the product of uh, our customer are, for example, um, snacks product, uh, breakfast cereal product, flakes, uh, ingredient like uh, baby food, uh, fibrated vegetable proteins, the topic of today, uh, couscous, short pasta, pet food twists, and uh, fish feed. We have also an important market, which is uh, what we call the uh, green industries, uh, and it will cover uh, um, uh, application like uh, biomass treatment, uh, cellul cellulose pulp, uh, so the, the paper pulp. To, uh, to produce uh, security uh, banknote, uh, chemical application also. Another um, segment is uh, the powder uh, industry. This is an application that uh, we have developed in the beginning of 2000, and this is uh, the production of uh, porous powder, of dried porous powder with uh, improved uh, properties. And uh, we have also an activity uh, based on dosing pumps for oil and gas industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we will, um, we will speak about uh, plant-based meat and fish analog and uh, what are the processes to do that. So we, uh, we have two uh, extrusion processes. One is called HME for high mature extrusion, and another one is called TVP for texturized vegetable proteins. Yes, you can. thank you. The, the main differences between these two processes are uh, the moisture content. Uh, the TVP is a low moisture uh, pro extrusion process. So that means that uh, the product uh, after the dye is between 10 to 23 percent and at the end of the line it's between 7 to 9 percent. The texture of the product is, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, so it's an expanded product, a dry product and uh, with a spongy uh, texture. And in the opposite, the uh, HME, high mature extrusion process, is a uh, is uh, uh, will uh, will go to uh, to uh, product with a more fibrous and meaty uh, texture with uh, moisture between 50 to uh, 70 percent uh, after the dye and the use of the the product we can say is not really the same we will use tvp much more at meat substitute or meat extender in comparison with uh, hme product that is much more like a meat analog so just uh, now uh, one slide to explain what is a twin screw uh, extruder and what is a twin screw extrusion technology mm -hmm. okay you can uh, you can go so the twin screw uh, extrusion technology is a continuous uh, process uh, the active part is composed of two uh, identical uh, co-rotating intermeshing screws and the twin screw extruder acts like a positive displacement pump. The screws are uh, turned inside a fixed body, which is called a barrel. You can see a barrel at the, at the bottom of the slide in the middle. And the screw assembly is composed of different screw elements that are mounted on a splint shaft. 
and you have an example of a screw element on uh, the left at the bottom of the of the slide and we can have a lot of range of screw elements with different design to um, adapt the the screw profile on the process that we want to develop inside the extruder so we can change uh, the mixing the shearing the conveying effect uh, onto the product and in the intermeshing zone uh, we uh, we have a very high mixing and shearing uh, that occur that occurs okay you can uh, you can go on mm -hmm. the tvp yes so now let's speak about uh, texturized vegetable proteins so it's the tvp process so the tvp uh, product is actually um, the main ingredient used in the plant-based uh, industry uh, in, in a volume. Uh, this is adapted to a large range of uh, vegetable protein and the product, as I have already mentioned, has to be uh, rehydrated uh, before usage and it can be added to meat as extender or directly as meat substitute. Mm -hmm. If we look at the raw material that we can use, uh, we can work with a large range of, uh, of uh, raw material. For example, for soy, we can work with a fatted soy flour, a defatted soy flour. The two, the two first soy flour are the main ingredients uh, that are used for TDP uh, today. We can also work with soy, concentra soy concentrate or soy isolate. Uh, with P, we can work with P isolate or P concentrate, and we can also use other proteins like fava bean, like lentils, and add different with gluten, of course, and uh, also add uh, different ingredients to uh, to optimize or to change uh, the the texture of the product. In in the full living uh, slide, uh, you will. Uh, you will show a different uh, TVP uh, based on soy. So uh, on, at the bottom, a low fat uh, soy flour. When we speak about low fat, that means um, a fat content, I will say uh, under six to eight uh, percent. Then you have the defatted soy flour. So that means that the fat content is under one or two percent. And you have also an example of a full fat uh, soy, uh, soy flour. So what we can say is that we can texturize uh, different type of soy flour, but the, the shape and uh, the texturization is not the same depending on the, on the raw material. On the next slide, uh, you, you have picture of over a TVP example like uh, pea concentrate, P isolate, soy and sunflower concentrate. As you can see, the, the color is uh, much more uh, darker due to the sunflower and also fava bean concentrate. Mm -hmm. And here you have a, a representation of an industrial uh, TVP line. So uh, from the right uh, to the left, uh, you have uh, the, um, the the feeding of uh, the uh, the preconditioner. So sometimes we can use what we call the preconditioner in in the line. A preconditioner is an equipment to hydrate uh, the the raw material, and it's used in case of TVP mainly to to change. I will say the the density and. In, uh, uh, in, particular, in particular, when you run with uh, low density raw material, you, you can uh, increase the, the, the density and so the throughput by changing the, the bulk density. And under the preconditioner, you can see the extruder. And then you have uh, a pneumatic transport to, uh, to uh, transfer the, 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 cut the product to the dryer. We, we have to, to dry the product, as I have already uh, mentioned, from, I will say, 10 to uh, 23 percent up to uh, 7, 9 percent for the storage. Okay. So now uh, let's go to the high mature uh, extrusion process. 
So this is a process that uh, combine uh, high protein uh, based uh, formulation and uh, high water content. When we speak about uh, high uh, protein content, uh, that means that uh, we have to, uh, to work with uh, protein content up to 50, uh, 70 percent in the dry base and uh, high water content, so uh, between uh, 50 to 70 percent uh, water content. And so that means that the product uh, at the end of the dye will contain between 25 to uh, 35 percent of protein. So this is a combination of that kind of formulation and an extruder, a long extruder with a long thermoregulated dye. And the, the product that is coming out, out of the dye, you have a picture on the left of the, of the slide, is a, a strip and you, uh, you have to uh, transform to this, uh, this product to get a ready to reach uh, meal. Okay, I'll go to the next one, formulation protein. Okay, so if we uh, look at the formulation, so the main ingredient in the formulation is the water. And uh, the second main ingredient is a protein base. So we can, we can work with uh, different uh, protein sources. Uh, the main sources today that we can find on the market is based on uh, soy, pea, and wheat gluten. But a lot of uh, new uh, protein uh, are uh, emerging uh, today, like uh, lentils, uh, chickpea, fava bean, uh, lupin, sunflower, hemp, and uh, so you have a very large choice of uh, raw material uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we can uh, use this raw material in forms of flowers, concentrates, or isolate. Uh, we can also use, but this is mainly for a uh, feed application, uh, animal sources. For example, we can uh, add uh, in the uh, vegetable protein base, we can add some uh, slurry, like uh, tuna slurry, like uh, chicken slurry, like uh, beef slurry, but mainly today for uh, feed application. And uh, also we can, uh, we can work with uh, what I can say, new uh, protein sources like uh, insects, like uh, mycoprotein, and like uh, algae. Okay. Um, now there's a video coming, right? Yes, I hope it will work, but I'm not I, sure. I don't yes. think so. Um, I don't yes, think I will, so. I, I will try. I, to... I will. Yes, I will try to to disconnect just after my presentation, and maybe I can. Um... Yeah, is it a video which is on uh, YouTube, by the way? Maybe then also you can share the link. Uh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Well, maybe we find a solution to share the video with the um, viewers <laughs> yes. somehow afterwards. Uh, now we, we go to the next slide, uh, which is the HME um, recipe examples. Yes. So here you have uh, so different product uh, coming out of the out of the dye with a different uh, recipe. So uh, you have the soy protein, uh, then you have a soy and sunflower protein. So as uh, as it was the case for a TVP, uh, here again the, the color is uh, much more uh, darker. Uh, soy and chickpea protein. So what what we can say is that depending on the recipe, um, you can have different, yes, well, color, of course, but uh, almost different uh, texture. So as you can see, the, the pea and the mycoprotein is not the same texture and in comparison with uh, the pea protein uh, recipe. So on the next slide, you have an industrial line uh, representation. So uh, the line is starting uh, uh, with uh, the, the, mix, the mixer. So uh, in the mixer, you, you will mix the different uh, raw material uh, that are uh, in, uh, in, in form of uh, flour. And then uh, the, the, the mixing is, uh, the mix is transferred to the surge hopper and then go uh, inside the extruder. The extruder that, uh, that we use is a long extruder uh, with uh, many barrels. And uh, we will inject uh, water, and we can also inject um, 
other ingredients like, for example, like uh, coro, like uh, oil also. And then you have a long dye. You can see that we have five zones of the dye and we have five uh, thermoregulation units. So we can change the temperature of the dye for each, uh, each zone. Uh, so then when you when you want to, uh, to obtain a ready to eat meal after the, the extruder, so you have the, the strip that is coming out of the extruder as you can see as you can see on the slide uh, on the left. And then you have to uh, to, uh, to apply different uh, post extrusion stages like cutting, like freezing. The, the freezing is important if you want to, to store the, the product because uh, as I have mentioned, the, the moisture content is between 50 to 70 percent. So you, you have to freeze the product if you don't want to process uh, quickly. And then you can, uh, you can imagine to, to grind, to, mar to marinate or to, to, uh, to have a cutting step to, um, to change the, the flavor. Or you can also add the, the flavor inside the dry mix, so at the beginning of the extruder. And then you can have a shaping, forming unit, or frying, uh, frying a unit. Mm -hmm. So here to, uh, to sum up the, the, the main differences between these uh, two uh, processes. So the, the raw material uh, for TVP, we are working with a dry raw material in form of flour, concentrate or isolate. And for HME, we can work with dry or wet state uh, raw material, and, but we need a high content in protein. So the product, you have a dry product uh, for TVP and you have a wet, not expanded product for HME. So the texture is not the same, expanded spongy texture for TVP and the more uh, fibrous, more um, firm and more uh, meaty uh, texture for HME. And uh, the, 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 the shell life is not the same because in one case it's a dry product and in another case it's a uh, um, humid uh, product. So uh, now, if uh, if we uh, look at what are the trends and the dynamics, as it was uh, already mentioned by uh, Maurice, so uh, the customer are looking uh, for a product that have a better texture, that are less expensive, and that uh, have a better taste. So this is the the way on which uh, we are working on. So. I think that you can go directly on the on yes the, the next one because here it is okay. the same okay, and how uh, manufacture the manufacturing industry can answer to this uh, question. So uh, what we uh, we can do is to optimize uh, the the recipe in order to uh, uh, to work to in order to have a better texture to propose a better texture and to get a better nutritional uh, profile. And uh, we can also uh, work on uh, the uh, raw material. On, the, on this picture, uh, yes, just go back, please. Okay, sorry, I thought that. No, no, mm -hmm. no problem. So on this picture, you, you have um, the, the texture yeah. with uh, two uh, soy concentrate. This is uh, the same recipe. This is, uh, not, uh, this is the same uh, protein content, the same uh, raw material. This is soy concentrate but just the reference as, uh, of the soil concentrate is uh, different. And so what we can see is that the texture, this is the, the strip that, that we have just uh, opened. And so we can see that the texture is completely different. So depending on the raw material itself, we can adjust uh, the, the texture. Okay. And we can also uh, work with uh, ingredients to, to mask the off flavor and improve the taste and the texture because we, uh, we know that depending on the uh, ingredient that we, that we will use, so depending on the mask and depending on, of the, uh, of the uh, flavors, it will impact not only the, the taste, but also the texture. Okay. Also, yes. The next one would be okay for yes. you, the next slide? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, and then we can we uh, we have also developed uh, technology. What what I can say technologies to propose product with uh, different thickness and new texture. 
Uh, on the picture, uh, on the left, uh, you have a strip uh, with a thickness of uh, 20 millimeters. So we can uh, we can propose a dye from uh, six millimeter to 20 millimeters. So depending on the end product, it may be interesting to have a, um, a product with uh, with an important uh, thickness. And we have also work on um, technologies to, to change uh, the, the, texture, the, the texture of the product and so to have a much more lamellar uh, product at, as you can see uh, on, the, on the picture in the middle and on the right of, of the slide. Mm -hmm. And also to, to, uh, to, to be able to, uh, to propose a less expensive uh, product, the, the manufacturing industry is working on the capacity increase, uh, of course, to reduce the uh, euro per kilo. Yeah, sure. I will now, um, if you're okay, because there are some um, links and uh, publications which you have, maybe you can share them in the chat afterwards. And I just yes, no to problem. The, um, to the contact um, in your in your team, in your global team. Uh, yes, for, 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 for all yeah. the world. Yes. Okay, so thank you. And uh, I am uh, very uh, disappointed by, uh, <laughs> by my computer, so... Oh, oh, please uh, don't be. This is um, that's that's uh, you know everything which is uh, regarding um, digital um, yeah digital meetings. It's always uh, it, at least it works, so it's good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much. And uh, yes, uh, that was a very complete um, presentation. I went to it now uh, three times, so I, I I could do the presentation almost just for my memories. Um, so this uh, just means it was a high uh, quality um, yeah, presentation and uh, we will send you the, the video somehow afterwards, we will figure this out, so no worries. And uh, yeah, for our close up of this webinar, um, we are now having the expert from Caravella, uh, Diana, um, having with us uh, today, uh, she's the NPD technologist, uh, super interesting uh, job by the way, they have so many creative ideas and uh, you're helping to make new food. So the Fish Peace brand, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to learn a little bit more about this with your uh, last presentation. Please go ahead, Diana. Hello. Uh, hello, dear partners, visitors, uh, viewers. Uh, my name is uh, Diana Opit, and I'm the new product uh, development technologist for the company Caravella. Uh, it's my pleasure to be a representative of the Caravella R&D team. According to our today's webinar, uh, I would like to focus on our vegan projects and possibilities, our own insights and conclusions. I didn't, I, uh, okay, presentation is on and I can continue. Yes, uh, but first of all, uh, I would like to introduce you to our R&D team. Our main duties and responsibilities are new product research and development that follows the newest tendencies in the market and consumer needs. To be at the top of the field, uh, three key development steps must be followed. Communication, dedication and timing. To produce value-added products, uh, Caravella is investing quite significant sums of money. Last year, uh, Caravella invested almost 1 million euros in the R&D field. I would also like to admit that R&D is just a small part of Caravella team and without sales, <clears throat> marketing, logistics, quality, finance, uh, purchase and production departments, we will not reach the level that we are right now. Especially because we have so many varieties and possibilities. We are using a mix and match principles to widen our product assortment. Uh, till now, we are working with plant-based proteins uh, from yellow pea, uh, soya, wheat, that could be processed with high moisture extrusion, hydrolyzing method, or as texturized vegetable protein. 
to meet our consumer needs and habits, uh, we have also a wide range of packaging options from 125 grams can up to 8.7 kilograms pouch. As you can understand, our success go hand to hand with our partners. Caravella R&D team is as good as our raw material suppliers, collaboration with each and one of them. It is like a puzzle. Uh, if one piece is missing, uh, we cannot reach our desired goals. One of our success stories in the vegan market is our fish paste brand. Fully developed from idea to the ready product range, like salads, spreads and flakes. In the research stage, our vision and belief were attended uh, to use of yellow pea as the main raw material, because it is the most sustainable uh, plant protein based on carbon footprint and with high nutritional quality. The main idea uh, was to develop uh, clean label products, which would be uh, shelf stable, high in protein with no artificial ingredients and additives. And we did it. But in the experimental stage, we also came to the conclusion that we need to go deeper and develop new products with a more intense uh, taste profile that would recall our customers uh, the regular canned fish. We are working with uh, new ingredients uh, such as yeast extracts and different kind of uh, natural flavorings which mask the off flavor and improve the taste. Basic uh, fishy, uh, tuna or mackerel. It also provides juiciness and umami taste and has a light fishy taste, which we need to integrate into our ready products. And for now, our biggest challenge is reinventing a classic. Plant-based tuna fillets under a transparent lid. The most complicated from a taste and texture perspective. In this case, we strongly believe that this would be the top uh, vegan product on the shelves and we will work till we reach the planned uh, results. Uh, we didn't stop with our previously mentioned fish piece product range, but uh, continued to look for uh, new tastes. And after some experiments, uh, we decided to expand our vegan assortment with soya based products such as flakes, salads and spreads. Uh, we stick with the same product range, but uh, created totally different recipes. To expand uh, the possibilities for seafood alternatives, uh, we jump into the unknown and started the, the experimental part for white fish fillets. The most important things for this project are, of course, uh, visual, visual appearance, uh, fishy taste and texture together with consistency as the most complicated parts. Uh, here you can see the picture from our laboratory, uh, canned plant-based white fish fillets uh, in marinade. And the last uh, but not least project from the plant-based category, I would like to mention, uh, uh, I would like to mention uh, and tell to you is the vegan mackerel in Scandinavian um, type tomato sauce. Uh, here targets are cleared. A perfect match with the original mackerel product we are producing with a strong uh, fishy and fatty uh, mouthfeel taste. As you can see, we have a wide range of vegan products uh, and we are continuously looking for improvements and solutions uh, as for now, the biggest challenge for Caravella 
is not the product that we can't produce, but to understand our consumers and offer the best product which meets their requirements and expectations. Uh, we have the production capacity to produce the product uh, knowledge of technologies, uh, an excellent sales and marketing team which will reach our consumers. But first of all, we need an excellent idea. Uh, there are more questions than answers, uh, but uh, I believe that if we manage to develop an excellent product and every team member would accept it with the highest uh, rating, uh, then we could move forward to reach the level when this product, uh, this new product becomes as a benchmark in the vegan uh, fish sector. Uh, on this note, uh, I would like to end my presentation. Uh, so thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Diana. I guess you you completed it very well. There are many ideas and, and you at Caravella well, with Fish Peace, you're doing really a great job. And uh, I think uh, we can still count on new and innovative uh, products coming to the market. So this is really interesting for me as a consumer. Um, this is more like a general question. So, um, Philip or Sylvie or Moritz, if you uh, want to um, also answer something to this, uh, please go ahead. But for me as a consumer, I would find it interesting to know, like, from, from literally the idea, okay, I would like to, for example, create a plant-based fish stick until its actual production and then uh, coming to the market, the market launch, how much time would is needs to be considered, for example, for this kind of line, or is it difficult to say? What do you think, all the experts? Uh, actually, it depends on the project. Uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, in our experience, there might be projects when we have an idea, we have all raw materials, we know the technologies, and we can start produce product tomorrow. <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it's uh, of course that we need to of course uh, organize all the things but uh, probably it's like uh, two or three months but if we have to some new projects uh, we, we don't have raw materials we need to find them try them then of course it might be all also some half a year probably a year it depends on the project and the mm -hmm. product Okay, uh, you you think the same, um, Moritz? You were you were um, like shaking your head, like uh, maybe maybe not. <laughs> I was uh, on mute. Um, I, I think absolutely the same. It really depends on the on the on the project brief. Depends on if you can start from from a kind of master application or if you want to uh, replicate something uh, from scratch using different protein sources, for example, going allergen free, working with with local ingredients. Um, that really depends. Um, what we like to do um, at, at Solina and Xterra side is, is really working with um, iterative trials um, and, and, and then trying to get it right from the start and trying to, to um, uh, rule out any um, interaction effects that you might have if you combine something for the first time as quickly as possible um, so that it can be scaled um, in the same quality very quickly from line trials in, in, the, in our pilot plant to the customer's um, uh, final setup, industrial setup, as quickly as possible. That's what we try to do. Yeah. And uh, Philip, regarding the raw materials, if there is a demand coming uh, for launching a new product, you always start with a smaller quant uh, quantity and then uh, you, uh, you deliver more. I don't even know what you have in backup. What, do you, what is your opinion about this regarding the timing? This will uh, the backup of the raw material will be no problem. We have uh, at first uh, invest a lot of in our um, no, no new extruder line, so we have a lot of uh, capacity free at the moment because we have a new line. Um, but um, also, yeah, but it's um, let's say a uh, difficult question because uh, at the moment, let's say uh, at the moment, it's uh, very difficult for the raw material because the world is uh, running a lot at the moment yeah. for the Corona and the, uh, the the rest of the uh, of yeah. the world. So at the moment, it uh, will be a difficult question. Uh, let's say in the normal time, it will be no problem of the raw material. 
um, we have a lot, but uh, at the moment it will be a little bit different. It's a little bit turbulent uh, time and also um, yes, the wave coming up and down. So at the moment it's, sorry to say, a, little, a hard question. Yeah, no, <laughs> but, I understand. I understand. I mean, we saw that at the very beginning of this pandemic, uh, supermarket shelves were empty. And uh, even uh, now, as uh, Ukraine is such an important country for delivering corns and so on, uh, we see that in many supply chains uh, that they are suffering. So, of course, it's a difficult question. It's more like in, in general, if uh, circumstances are given normally. Okay. Yes, there's, um, there's, there, there, will, there, there will be no problem um, to, to um, increase uh, the delivery. That is no problem for us. Yes, okay. For sure, for Perfect. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, I'm just the, um, yes. Sorry, uh, short sentence also. No, this is uh, also our our our, um, our our work to have a um, let's say a new new product, a new baby, and we would like to increase it together because uh, if we have a good uh, product, it will be increased by himself. Yes, absolutely. Hopefully. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm uh, just uh, checking. There is uh, no further question uh, in the chat. We are right on time. It's uh, almost 3.30. Um, if, however, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you still have some um, questions, you can email us. We will send an email out with the link uh, for YouTube so that you can um, check the video again afterwards. If you uh, would like to know a little bit more about vegan products in retail and uh, shelf space, uh, well, you can connect tomorrow almost the same time, two o'clock um, at CET uh, Rome Paris time. Uh, you're warmly welcome to join us. And I uh, wish you a beautiful afternoon and uh, a lovely day and a lot of success with all your different projects. And especially thanks to Caravella uh, and our speakers, Diana, Sylvie, uh, Philip and Moritz. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks. Great event. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Goodbye.